Hello and welcome to another tutorial. You may hear some background noise, a cowboy movie going on in the background. But what we're going to do today is carve a little man out of a one by one stick. So I have here a piece of basswood that is one by one and approximately six inches, but that doesn't matter if we go six or if we go four. I've painted two sides of it with a watered down blue acrylic so that you can see the cuts better because I can't carve up here. I need to carve down on my lap, but I'll keep bringing it up so that you can see it. And we're hoping to do something along the lines of these fellas, which is my little office workers. So we've got this little chap carved out of that block. And we got this little chap carved out of that block too. I'm not too sure how long this tutorial will last, but we'll give it a go. If it gets a little bit too long, we'll stop it and we'll do another part. Hey help, there we go. So firstly, make sure we got a nice sharp knife. Now we want to actually work out the dimensions of where we're going. When I've done one already, it's relatively easy for me just to lay it alongside and work out where his nose is and where his hair is going to be. Same size block, but we will be looking the nose somewhere like inch and a half down the block somewhere like here for the bottom of the nose I'm going to drop it a little bit lower because we've got enough wood so let's go let's go about there so we're gonna that wood's a bit wet from when I was uh I painted the blue acrylic on there which I've only just done but we're gonna go to the bottom of the nose like so, and then we're going to go for the ridge of the nose to be about here. So now I know that my ears are going to be level with my eyes and the bottom of my nose. So they are going to be here in here, so this is where my ears are going to fit. And on the other side, the same again. Eye line or the brow line and the bottom of the nose, that's where my ears are gonna fit. Now we're gonna use a bit of pencil work so that we know what we're doing. So we look, the nose end, look at the top. We don't want this piece here. We don't want this piece here, mainly because we wanna bed the ears in there. And we won't need that back piece either. Now we've got the nose in line and we know where our mouthpiece is going to be. We're going to work out the chin. The chin will drop down from about the size of the nose from below the nose. So if we've got the nose like that, we look at the chin being here. I like my chin's a little bit lower. So we'll be looking at the chin around about here, which would suit with our ears being Right about here, and the chin line is going to come back up towards the ears, like so. Pencil will just help you to work out what he looks like, where you're going with it. And keeping it symmetrical is a damn sight easier when you've got some pencil markings on there. That's what we're looking at. I know you're not going to be able to see those pencil markings very well now I've painted it blue. But that's what we're looking at. So we will start by removing from that ear, just below that ear line, without dropping too below that chin, we will remove that side. So let's do that first. So we are just removing that wood up to that top of that mark that we've got. Um, to the other side. And then we'll do the back as well. I 
And then we can look down on the top, try to make sure we are all quite symmetrical and all properly in line. Now, you can go narrower and narrower, or we can give ourselves more room. Remember where our chin line is. So I would say we are about right, I think. Yeah, I'd say we're about right. So then we look at the eye line. So the top of the eye line, which we have there is the brow, be here. Let's get a pencil out for this. So top of the eye line, here, bottom of the nose is going to be here, so that's going to be our ear. So then the same on the other side. We don't need to pencil in any of this yet because we might move it. That is effectively going to be our ears. So, ear cuts we take the knife, we dig, cut straight in, stop, cut up to. The mark we've just made for the ear. I'm using a rough out knife, which is too, probably too big for this, and we should be using a detail knife. But I've got it in my hand, and that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so you can see where the ear is going on this one. In order to get down a little bit lower, I'm moving that jawline a little bit because I've brought that up a bit high. Okay, same the other side. remember to wear your carving glove which I never do because I'm stupid take a look at it see if we can get the get it symmetrical okay it's pretty symmetrical to me now the ears will start over the top of the shoulder so we can mark kind of where the shoulder is going to be here that's going to be the front of the ear and the other ear be the same. So we're basically almost drawing um, through the middle of that ear that we just made. And then all we're going to do is we're going to score a line down the middle of that, angling it slightly inwards, slightly inwards so we can get that sort of gradual slope. And then we're going to come up the inside of that ear and just remove that front piece like so so we have removed that front part of that ear so we've now got one ear just recessed back and now we'll recess the other ear. So again, on that line, just cut it all the way down through, but angling it slightly towards the face. Come back down with your knife and just remove that chunk of wood. And we've got a man with a pair of ears sticking out. Okay, so we're now looking at that jawline again that we penciled in. I'm thinking that kind of looks about right. I think we're happy with that. So we'll take a similar cut to what we did with the bottom of the nose and we'll run that under the chin. And then we'll follow that line up towards the ear. 
This is where your pencil is going to come in handy so you can follow a line. So that it's symmetrical, otherwise having a non-symmetrical jaw, depending on the expression you're going to have on the fella's face or mouth. So very, very important to get these first few things right. So then we're going to come up on the other side. I think we're looking quite symmetrical there. And we're just going to do likewise. Just come in and sort of keep the head for the sake of the tutorial or the video. I'm not going too long. I'm not going to worry too much about the back. Uh, there are things we can do with the back. Um, could talk about them at a later date. Let's just round off what will be the top of the shoulders. Hopefully now, because that's blue, you'll get a good view of what that looks like. Got the ears penciled in. So now with the ears, all we need to do there is make little uh, cuts to take the um, corners off. So we'll take the corners off the ears, front and back, and then we're just going to slide the knife again, similar but we're sort of rotating it in a semicircle around the back of the ear, like so. And then just coming up alongside it and just removing that piece of wood. So we've got, don't worry about how messy it is at this stage because we can go back and clean it up afterwards. But we're going to get an ear shape developed from out of that. Now, from the side of this ear, we're going to slope our knife inwards and slide that blade and almost curl it so we can get an indentation of the ear. Again, that's going to leave some wood on the front side so we can just slide down where your sideburn would be just to remove that and give us that, that ear shape. Okay, so we've got that ear shape. Again, we can come back and clean it up and make it more ear-like as we go, but for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. Nobody wants me to sit here and watch me take ages cutting an ear. We'll quickly go over to the other side and do that again. So we're upside down now, but we've got the same scenario. We're just gonna take the corners off come on Ben remember what we're doing just take the corners off the ears just run through that again corners off the ears and we're just going to slide the blade in a circular around the back of the ear and then just come back on it to remove the back of the ear so that it becomes more Recessed. And again, you can play around with that a little bit more afterwards, but you can see from the back of the head, you can see these ears now. from the front we've got those ears in place <laughs> okay so from the nose point of view from these up from this eye line we're going to go across if I can get this on camera a bit better we're gonna go across and then we're gonna go down okay 
so from the nose, up there, and then from top, down. Okay, see that cut? And then we'll do that on the other side, where we're actually trying to make sure that that, that uh, join at the top is in the middle of the nose. So I have to be exact at this stage. So we'll do that a couple more times. And this will just depend on how deep you want to get that eye line. From the top, from the frown. And he should be looking like a good stage for a cartoon style eyes. Okay. Now from the nose, what we're going to do is we're going to take a small, ang a small angle up and then a little slither out. Just so we've got an angle on the nose and we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, so we've got an angle on the nose now. We are going to come up alongside the nose here alongside the eye alongside the nose and we're going to make a roll cut so hopefully you can see this so i'm just going to go alongside that eye and just roll it up now what this is doing is just shaping that nose for us see? and we'll do the same the other side being right-handed I'm going to end up going towards the eye and then on that side as well and then come under and just roll that Now, I strongly advise at this, when you do the cut for the smile lines, that we use a pencil, because this can go badly wrong as far as symmetry is concerned. So now we're gonna have this guy, we're gonna, we're gonna be in the same place on each side of the nose. So we'll take this down here, I think. Let's just go that far so far. Hopefully you can see that better if I got a pen which would make a bit of a mess of it so we're going gonna go we could come out a little bit wider or we could come narrower but you can see that now what we need to do is the exact exact same place on the other side unless we're doing some sort of expression where he's winking or one of the eyes is massive, much more open than the other one, in which case that will change the shape of how the, how the mouth is. Best thing to do there is pull the expression in a mirror so you can actually see. So what I need to do is copy that, like for like, on the other side. I think I pretty much got him right there. So then what we're going to do with our knife, it's on that line, just follow that line down, make an indentation. Okay, and then we're going to take a slither out. Like so. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Put our knife in. Follow our line. Come back up. And just take a slither out. Okay. Now. What we're going to do now is we're going to come in at 
here on the nose. Okay, and we're just going to follow that nose line into that cut, like so. Okay, and then we'll do the same on the other side. So that nose line into that cut, or the cut across the nose line in that case, like so. And then we will come across and remove a chip between the two. Kind of like that. And what this is doing is, is putting the nose back into the face to give it a more realistic look because a lot of the nose is actually in the face. So we'll do the same on the other side. And we can just round that and shape that nostril and that line however we see fit. Okay. We can just go back into that line, separate it from the nose a little bit if we want to, or we can leave it as it was. I'm just going to go back in and separate that line just a touch so it's easier to see on the camera. And then I'm going to also just clean up just around that nostril area so they both match look good okay now we've got a bit of a square nose going on because we've still got that corner piece of the wood so we're just going to round the nose gently so we can remove the blue part of the paint so we've now got our nose We've got our base for our eyes. Now, we're doing good. <laughs> so now what we want to do is we want to make a mound where we're going to put the mouth. So we're just going to knock the corner off altogether on here. And then we're just going to go back into where that smile line is. Just start rounding the wood off. This will help us create uh, lips. Perhaps you might want to go back in and just define that line a little bit. And again, just take your time with all of it. There's no rush. It's not about the quickest work there in the world. It's just about finding ways of making it work for you. Okay, just gonna roll that chin in a little bit because he's sticking out quite a touch. jawline on him so I'm just gonna round that off a little bit I'm just gonna shake this ear this ear was I forgot to curl this one in So 
will be coming back to play with the ears again a bit later anyway. Okay, we're going to remove that bigger line for his forehead as well. We're going to start rounding that off a little bit. So we've got it looking more realistic. have some ideas of where you want to go with the head, whether you wanted a hat, whether you wanted hair, I haven't even decided yet. We are just rounding that off now. So that top that we were dealing with earlier on is now totally round or close to it. And our face is now starting to look like a bit like a Frankenstein-y type face. Now we might want to just start shaping that recess again like so get it nice and deep this is where our eyes are going to go okay again we can we can roll the cut by the nose if we need to just to define the nose a little bit more Sometimes less is more, sometimes details make it pop. You will know just looking at it. There we go. Okay, so we've got several different ways we can do eyes now. We could do the cuts where we round out an eyeball in the middle of it. Or we could use the gouge to gouge it out and then take some little cuts. So I'm going to see if I can find my gouge a second. Ready? Okay. Okay. So we're going to take our gouge and we are going to go in alongside the nose. Nice and soft, nice and simple. Just effectively, we're making an eye socket right up alongside that nose. See? One without, one with. We can come at different angles for that. We can go as deep as we like. Gonna go a little bit deeper with this one. Taking on a bit of a Frankenstein-y look. Let's go to the other side. Again, we'll try and get them to match, but we don't necessarily have to be. Try and get them quite deep. We'll give this guy a bit of a menacing look, shall we? Okay. I think we're at a similar sort of depth here. Yeah, I think we're roughly where we want to be. Okay. Now what we're going to do is with our pencil is we are going to mark a dot in each corner. This is going to be where your tear duct would be. And then we want the outside, a dot on the outside eye of each side. Now the reason we're going to dot it is because we want both eyes to be the same size. So we're going to go put the dot on the inside of there, put the dot on the inside of there. Just take it back away from your face so you can see that looks right. And we'll have a dot on the outside, dot on the outside. Does that look the same sort of size? Yes, I think so. I think I think we've got that. So then what we're going to do 
is we're going to take our knife and we're going to put a very small V in the corner of the eye to create that type of tear duct. So the V has to stay within that eye socket. And then we come along and we just nip that out. Can you see that? Just nip that out. Now we can go in and make that a little bit deeper if we want to by taking another little slice. So effectively we're just taking a little V cut out of the corner of the eye. Now we've already got our marking on the other side, so we do the same again. V in and then we just take that little chip out just about make that out hopefully okay and then the outside corner is going to be the same V cut angling up and down and then we're just going to remove that little V. Now the bigger the V we remove here, the bigger the little chip we remove here, the more the eye will look recessed or sunken. So I'm just going to take a few little cuts to see if I can get that eye look a little bit more in the head and the same on the other side sunken eyes then what we're going to do is that those two V cuts look like they could join up so we're just going to draw a line with our blade at the bottom just to just to join them up we'll do the same with the other eye And then we're going to roll our cut underneath the bottom of that eye against the cheek, right over to the other side. You see that? Do that again. Take that blade, just roll it over to the other side. Take a chip out. Now we can see the eye better, so we can go in and just remove any, any rubbish we don't want in there. Fuzzies. And just keep making that rolling cut until you're, you're happy. And same on the other side. And this can just help us to shape the nose this side as well. So we can just roll it in and just go tuck right up under the eye and then come back in on the eye. Just to segregate that eye a bit. We got some eyes in there now. I do a similar thing with the top as well. Draw that sort of circular line to the bottom. Do that with the other one as well. 
and that just removes that. And then going back in again with that rolling cut, we can just take that nose, just make that nose pop out a little bit by bringing those cheeks back in. Due to the situation with the lights, one of the eyes is looking deeper than the other, but it's not like that at all. Their sunken eyes. Right, so we're going to move back down to the mouth. So we want this to be a mound, so we're just going to roll this so it is a mound. And then we work out the expression that we might want on this face. Now, if we were going to have a smiley face, we might want to take a smile into here and here. Or frown it will come down more straight we can make cheeks a little bit on here as well so what we what we might want to do is we might want to bring it in here and then match it the other side in here to create the pouches of the cheeks so let's do that now so we'll just take Cut there, go in, cut across, and in. Okay, we'll do the same the other side. tidy those cuts up a little bit but effectively we have just created little pouchy cheeks And then we just, we're just going to bring his chin in a little bit because he's bothering me, his chin's quite big. Let's just bring that one in. Okay. Right, the big one then. Let's do the mouth. So we've got the shape that all there already. Let's put the knife down properly, Ben, before you cut yourself. And we're gonna draw the mouth in. So I'm gonna do like a bit of a bit of an M shape mouth. So up at both ends, down a little bit in the middle. Try not to over dramatize it too much. It's going to look a little bit like that. Okay, and all I do it with my mouth is I score that now with a knife. Might not go down too far on that particular side, like so. And then I go up and just cut a slither out by cutting up to it from underneath. to formulate a top a top lip 
and I'll try and cut in and slightly under just to give it a shadow. Those shadows make a big difference to our carving looks because those shadows are what giving it that depth. Pretty sure this guy's turning into Herman Munster or the like. Okay. That's what we got out of that guy. Do a lower lip. So we're going to do a, get our pen out again. Where do we want that lower lip to be? Let's go sort of along there, I guess. That sort of thing. So in which case we will get our blade, we will go on that lower lip, we will cut down um, just gradual to start with. So just a downward cut, slope downward, and then we'll come back up and we will just want to remove quite a small slither first to make sure we're happy with our lower lip. Let's see where pretty happy with that I would have thought let's just shape it a little bit so it actually is shaped to match the upper lip just tuck it in a touch Just going to tuck it into the upper lip. chin so it doesn't look too too rigid we got ourselves a, a lower lip what I like to do with the lower lip is just go in under it the upper lip just take a little slither out of the bottom lip so it actually looks as though The upper lips kind of sloped into it, so it looks like they fit together. Which is handy. And it will just give us a bit of a gap as well, which will give the impression the mouth is open, or at least a little bit open, like so. Okay. And I'll just shape. Again, with that rounding that upper lip, just make sure it fits right with the nose. Just kind of shape that in. And then I'm just going to shape these cheeks because that lower. That lower one looking a bit puffy. I don't want them to be too puffy. So we'll just shape that in a little bit. Do that on both sides. I'm almost trying to remove the, the blue paint a little bit now because we can pretty much see our man now. So I'm probably just going to go around and just do that. And we are 
very close now to pretty much having boxed this fella in. Just move that head, headline back a little bit. Okay, so we've got a cool little face. And then we'll just move that front hairline back. And then we're kind of creating the eye brow sort of bridge. Rounding off the cheeks again. Getting rid of some of this blue paint now. We're nearly there with removing that paint. Now I like two little movements with me gouge. I like to put one on that upper lip, tucking it straight up into the nose. And then the other one I like to do coming down between the eyes. And this will just well segregate the, uh, the eyebrows. And we'll also give them a bit of a meaner look or frustrated look. You can take that away if you want. I kind of like it. Okay, so let's just trim that up on the nose. Okay, and this is where we now need to decide what we're going to do with all this room up here. We can cut it off. Clearly, we're not going to put a hat on him because I haven't done it to be that way. So I think... A bit of a... Now, should we give him a bit of an Elvis haircut? What do you think? What do you think? Let's go with a hairline. So let's do a hairline then. So let's start here, and we are going to put our blade in there, and then we're going to come down almost at a 90 degree angle here, and then we're going to remove a chip from there. Oh, I might take that a bit deeper. Okay triangle chip at the side of his head and we're going to replicate that over the other side could bring that one higher up if we needed to it doesn't have to be exactly the same place but we're going to do that over there okay and then we're going to join those lines now it doesn't matter how we join those lines you don't really want it to be totally dead straight so maybe a little bit up and down and then we'll cut into that, using that as like a stop cut. We 
started this off by being a proper little doodle of a face. And we're going to end up with Herman Munster somehow. And if you had started with that plan, you could have done the face expression to match. A bit of a hairline for this fellow. He's got a bit of a meek on haircut. So let's draw this line that we created here. Let's pull this right way down towards the ear. And then we're going to take a slither out from there for the hairline. side let's round off the top of his head to stop him looking so so monster like monster looking. Let's pull that parting up a little bit, make it look a little bit more realistic. Just take that V-cut a little bit deeper on that side so it looks as though he's receding a touch up on the hairline here. I'm going to shape the head to go like that as well because I'm just noticing the sides of his head seems to be a little swollen. So let's take the sides of his head in a touch. So just above the temple, we're just going to go in and up into that hairline, make the hairline pop, give him a little bit more shape to his face. Do more with his hair now. So I'm just shake his hair away so it doesn't quite look so wiggy. And maybe angle it a little bit to get more stop looking so round. Okay, we can probably bring this corner piece in as well. Bring that back a little bit on the corner. Keep pulling that forehead into the hairline. Sloping it back each time. Okay, so we've got a more realistic looking face going on now. A 
and just go back over, take off any fuzzies, just reshape the head. You should be able to look at it now and be able to visualize what's right and what's wrong. Caught, caught the blade in a couple of places where I've actually marked it. There's also a bit of, bit of dark wood over the side so I can kind of cut that out here. And we will start to define the ears a little bit. There's lots of different ways of doing ears. Obviously, the most easiest way would be to get that gouge out I had and just um, kind of gouge the ear out. And um, what we could do is we could take our blade here and just make a V cut in the center of the ear just to make a simple indentation and it will just make that quite simple I mean, you can do there's lots of different ways of doing ears as there are eyes and we could could really go to town on that and make that look like a realistic ear but let's face it we haven't got time for that and again we could we could shape it all the way around but let's not let's just stick with that so here we go again on the other side, we've just taken a small V, just a small V to start with, and just keep widening it until we're happy with the shape we got. Different angles of the V, just to get that kind of ear shot. You can go around and you can shape it a little bit more afterwards. We can do another V further in the ear, just to make it look a little bit more realistic if we wanted to, top and bottom. That looked quite good with that one. So we'll do that with the other one as well. is just like little V cuts aiming towards the center center of the ear. How we looking? Looking pretty good. Then just go back in, touch up a couple of things. I just want to go slightly deeper on this eye. I think it's the light I have here that's catching one eye making it look quite a bit deeper than the other because they don't actually look too much like that to, to me sat here. But because we've got that slightly recessed eye now, we can go back in and shape it. Now the eyes, if we'd done them properly when we marked them, should be the same size. But if they're not, we can go back in, just make some adjustments on those eyes and just make sure we've got them matching a little bit more and we can make them pop a little bit more by making them a little deeper I think we've kind of done that what we can also do on the corner of these eyes to just take a little nick where the eye line comes down and come back in, just remove a piece. Like so. And then if we do a little nick just towards the side of it, we are creating a small wrinkle on this little fella. Don't go too overboard because this is quite a small carving anyway. And we'll do another one next to it. Remembering this is quite small, so this isn't necessary. And we'll go over the other side. And we'll do the same again. Small little neck. Small little neck. Again, that's just giving him some wrinkles.
One of his cheeks is slightly higher than the other, which is giving him a slight expression. So we can just play on that. Or we'll just tighten it in. And then we want the cheeks to just slide back in towards the ear at the back. Now effect, effectively got as close as we need to get with our face. Now I'm going to stop there because we've been an hour and I'm conscious of how long I am on these. And then when we come back, we will then work on the collar and the shoulders. And we will get somewhere closer to this little guy. Oh, this little guy. Okay. We could put in bags like the middle guy here. But I don't think we will. I think he's looking all right. Maybe some lines in the hair. Who knows? Okay, hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.